Hello everyone, welcome to my Headshot Photography podcast and today I have amazing guests. I've been waiting for this interview for, I have to say, a long time and thank you for finding the, finding the time for me. And we have today Editor-in-Chief of ISO 1200, Dan Hosteller. And welcome to the podcast. I have tons of questions for you. Um, and um, I, as I mentioned before, we start even this podcast. I, I, I'm so amazed what you guys are doing. The all direction you guys are taking when it comes to educations for photographers is, is, is amazing. And you guys have done tremendous work over the last uh, many, many years. So I just, first of all, I just want to say thank you for for whatever for everything what you guys are doing because this is fascinating and it's amazing. And you guys, I have to say, in my view, in my opinion, you guys have changed the direction of photography education. So welcome to the podcast. Thank you for your time, and um, let's let's jump into it. Thank you so much for the invitation, Rafael. Thanks for having me, and. Yeah, let's see what we can expand about how much we changed education and how much we will change the education and how much we have helped you and will help you in the future. I'm very um, keen to talk about that. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So let's start with, if you could just share with, with, with us a little bit of brief history of ISO 1200, how this whole thing started. Um, how you guys kind of come up with this concept. Um, I know from my own experience that a lot of those kind of educational things for photographers, you know, was, were kind of different decade ago. Everyone was hiding whatever they knew. Um, in order to learn something, you have to dive really deep into some, you know, stuff. A lot of those things were kind of outdated. And photographers, they didn't have you know, kind of any willingness to share any information. And over the last 10 years, it seems like this whole thing changed drastically. And and you guys were one of those, I would say, first, in my opinion, you know, kind of social media platforms slash websites where you guys start really kind of pulling those informations out of internet and pushing forward. So if you could just tell me a little bit how this whole thing started, you know, what's your involvement um, and then how this whole thing kind of come up to the existence. Sure. So the first thing I just need to mention is I jumped in relatively late into the whole ISO 1200 um, project and brand. I'm now here for expanding into or onto new horizons. So it's my good friend and, and hobby photographer, Jose, who's a Spanish guy who's living in Spain, who mm-hmm. actually started the whole, let's say, movement. In a way, you described what we helped the photographers and helped the industry. So let's say it was kind of a movement. But mm-hmm. of course, it, it was kind of completely unintentional. <laughs> like the most great thing that happened that they start somewhere and then they well Took off. they take on the form on its own. So Jose started ten approximately ten years ago digging for educational nuggets, news behind the scenes that photographers are revealing, mm-hmm. most likely in YouTube videos. So that's like really ten years. So social media was not really a thing back then. So that was still in the era of blogs and YouTube. So what Jose did, because he was interested to learn as much as possible behind the scenes, various lighting settings, mm-hmm. processes, um, productions, posing, whatever, he started actually to write a little program to find on a fast way new good releases. Mm-hmm. This that he packed into um, daily blog posts and a daily newsletter, I guess. Mm-hmm. And that's what he started to send out to people that subscribe to his free blog, which was called ISO1200.com. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess that was the whole beginning. And as you said, as far as I can remember talking to Jose, uh, there was not much around for free. So there was not a lot of resources for free on YouTube. Of course, that was the time Creative Life started. So I guess Creative Life had some cheesy videos or some, you know, samples and stuff like that. But 
I mean, it was not really common for us photographers. I'm a photographer too, uh, a formal educated one. So it was not really um, common for us to share information that way, right? Mm -hmm. Because YouTube then grew, and of course the monetization with YouTube came, and people started to have interest in that, so creators started to have interest in that. But Jose started to collect pieces and bits that interested him mm -hmm. and that are of value about behind the scenes. Fast forward, I guess, like four years later, so six years back, the whole Instagram story started, or I mean, mm -hmm. the social media channel started, Instagram. That wasn't probably also, I'm not really familiar with the, with the dates, but I guess six, six years ago, so mm -hmm. Instagram was on the, on the uprise, mm -hmm. and it was the perfect tool to actually connect with photographer to ask them, hey, do you have valuable behind the scenes connected with a final picture? We want to share this. And as you can see, the reach or, or the idea of this it was super successful. So we have now like, I don't know, 550,000 followers uh, just in, on the Instagram channel about behind the scenes. And that really changed and shaped also in a certain way how photographers created their content or presented the content on their own channel so that it was actually uh, viable for us to, to share. Mm -hmm. Plus, uh, for us, it's kind of an easier way to share something than writing or creating a blog post, putting this in a newsletter, etc. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. we know, we all know it, right? It's social yes. media. And this, from there on, it just started to expand and grow and started to give us great connections. Mm -hmm. For us, it was not all so only about learning mm -hmm. for ourselves or not anymore, but it was actually to start getting connections and valuable connections and personal connections mm -hmm. with you photographers, with you creators, like with you, mm -hmm. Rafael. So um, Thank you. that was the nice unplanned side effect, which is now the whole thing. So it's, it's, it's a huge networking thing for us mm -hmm. and for ISO 1200. So it's like a win, 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 yes. non plant. <laughs> well, I 100% I agree with you that this sparks so many different things which we didn't even expect is going to happen, right? Because I remember when I started posting those kind of behind the scenes. So there's two little things which I want to mention here. One of them is that you also force photographers to be more creative. And, and what I mean by that, I remember when I kind of got a little bit recognition on on your site and I I've noticed that you post some of my behind the scenes so that forced me to you know create more content and also show how this how whatever my process of doing specific images happened but that also was, was one thing but the other side that also helped me to grow because whenever I was taking images from the behind the scenes I also learn from it because I could see what I'm doing, how I can improve things. So as you said, it's a win-win-win situation for so many things, but we never thought about kind of learning, you know, in that kind of context, right? Because photographers, most of the time, they take a shot, whatever, and they sometimes they even forget what they've done, right? You know, like I'm coming back, I'm coming from wedding industry where you know like there was always go 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 and I never even analyze my work what I've done how right. I, how I kind of improve it and I think he, this thing what you guys have started kind of also help photographers to to pay attention to details learn more more from their doing but also pushing that information forward that's also is kind of amazing that you know some other photographers can take specific concepts and pretty much, you know, just kind of improve it or do something with this. So that's that's fantastic. So that's that's great, you know, what you guys are doing. And I think, again, this put completely different uh, path on education when it comes to photography. So my, so my next following question is, how do you think, and this is where I want to kind of dive a little bit deeper into this, how in your opinion education changed over the last decade? What is the biggest thing you've noticed change into this industry that education just took completely different path and looks completely different these days that looked you know decades ago? Um, now let's leave beside the fact 
that the photographers are start, starting to show more or to reveal mm -hmm. more, right? So that's kind of a given. So yes. that's kind of a thing they need to do that anyway. Everybody's doing it now in some form or in another. So that's kind of done. So we break in, we break it up. Mm -hmm. That's kind of given now. Um, well, I think really a lot of things come down to, to the social media education. I, it's not a real education, but it's an insight, it's an inspiration, mm -hmm. it's a micro-learning, but really on the on a normal level, um, if done right, that's what we are trying to do with our big Instagram channel. Uh, we have a second one, a Facebook group, where mm -hmm. actual hobbyists can do the same thing, so the editorial criteria is a bit different there, mm -hmm. but it follows the same idea in a way of uh, shooting figures, gear specs, uh, lighting, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So, on a positive, like on a negative note, with all the social media channels and formats, things got really boiled down, things got really, really pragmatic. Mm -hmm. So now, if we take as an idea, which I truly admire, and still um, doing very good, so if we take it as an idea, I guess 10 years ago, Creative Life started with their crazy idea of live shows for free and then repackage or like packaging them, starting to sell them and they expanded like really huge. Okay. Mm -hmm. They just sold, got sold or got merged with Fiverr. So they're taking the next steps too, because uh, you see surprise education. I just want to mention a few of this kind of platforms that we get a feeling what's going on in the, let's say, photography educational space online. Mm -hmm. So, Sue Bryce and the Portrait Masters got sold to Emerald Group, which is kind of an investor group. They run uh, photo expos in the United mm -hmm. States. So, what I want to say is the larger platforms are looking for a way forward because, in my opinion, Let's see what happens with Kelby One next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because in my opinion, this long-form content, which is absolutely fantastic and it needs its place. So if you want to go ex deep, dig deep and extensive in a topic, you need long-form la long long content. Mm -hmm. But obviously, that's not the only way to learn anymore. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, in my perception, and if you look on all the social media channels, and sorry for bringing up TikTok, which is completely mm -hmm. out of the range for that, but it's it's good about perception and the and the, the perception span and and where things are headed, mm -hmm. serious or less serious, uh, that's that's another question. But the long form content, watching five hours, six hours, or three days a tutorial or a show or whatever about something. That still has, um, that still is something that's thought after, but that's not the only form anymore people want to, to learn from. In certain things, people want to break in into a topic or just in a, in a, in a nano topic or in, in, a, in a short form of a tutorial, 90 minutes or live show that goes 70 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. I just would like to expand a bit, like 10 years ago or 12 years ago, as a me as a formal photographer, I was trying to get insights to write. And 15 mm -hmm. years ago, we bought books about that, and then we read blog posts, and then somehow YouTube came along, and Creative Life came along, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But things have so much changed over the last, well, let's say 15 years, 10 years, that we think it is time that certain topics. Or no, that topics that are somehow categorized needs to be shorter, more pragmatic, etc. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really shows on Instagram with the photo posts. Now they want to change this to video or whatever this will be mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, with photo posts, that's something that's attracting people. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not a really a, a real learning experience, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a kind of a first glimpse, it's an insight, it's probably a reminder, it's a quick win, etc. Mm -hmm. And we want to expand on that. But 
we truly think that six hours tutorials in a way except you really want to dig deep and mm -hmm. get really specialized in something in general for the global audience and global scale mm -hmm. that's done mm -hmm. okay well it's, it's, it's really interesting because you see this whole thing from different perspective right and I know many of us you know like this is something new like especially for me you know like sharing stuff you know and I agree with you when it comes to you know like uh, we're getting those bits of information right from different social media and then it's just like a little thingy which kind of gives you just a little input um, when it comes to educational but I agree with you when it comes to you know how we can take those bits and expand them and just give people like more valuable because I also teach, you know, students where I have people kind of from all over the world, which they want to really dive deep into this. And I think what is really missing um, that uh, even though you have the recipe and we talked about it last time, you have this kind of entire thing laid out and you know exactly what to do, what the settings, what the gear, what the lighting, how to set it up. You still need to practice, right? You still need to kind of have the experience and you have to kind of you know do it yourself and that's when the kind of problems kind of kicks in because even though it looks easy doesn't mean you know you're gonna know how to do it and i always have this kind of um you know example that you know just because you have you know great shoes and you know how to run doesn't mean you're going to be able to run marathon right away it needs takes time and practice and i right. think a lot of photographers um forget about it that you know those things unfortunately you need to kind of get on it for for a longer time so let's kind of kind of expand this so you guys see this kind of potential right and you guys can see what the kind of next step might be and then you know the direction of this educational kind of part of photography so what's what's the goal of you know iso 1200 do you guys have any strategy i know you guys just launched new website which is extremely fascinating um and it seems like you guys already putting a lot of lot of work onto this to expand this whole thing so if we could talk about what's the goal with with whatever you guys are doing right if you could just kind of expand on this a little bit Sure. Let me start first with how I see this long form, this in person, and this snippet thing. Just sure. This probably is kind of the ground, the, the ground level or the foundation. What we are now trying to achieve and to build, or our strategy and our vision, right? Absolutely. So I'm absolutely with you. Uh, the you see something, you have a recipe, you know how the lighting is, and if you watch. Uh, the creator A, the lighting is this way, the B is this way, the C is this way. So, I mean, there is no uh, right and wrong. So, even if you watch seven different creators with a three light setup, you have seven different uh, recipes, you still can't do it. You know now seven um, um, recipes, but you can't implement it. So, the actual workshops that are in person or online, one on one in person, that will never go away, and that's the, that's the best kind of learning, right? But um, the pandemic hit, people are sitting sometimes in Canada, and the, uh, your client is sitting in, I don't know, in Singapore or whatever. Um, so it's got normal to have also online connections and online learning. But of course, in-person workshops, that's something that really brings you like 10 steps forward. But which means, in my opinion, or also with observation, what happens the last uh, five years and what we see in, in, in the trajectory over the next five years, long-form online content, at least one-way learning, so long tutorials that do not offer any interaction, uh, which sometimes creative life is really doing great. So they have kind of a live audience, uh, if they still have that, probably not right now with the pandemic, but they have a chat that's accompanying the, the, the live show, etc. So as long as there's a kind of a little bit of an interaction, that's okay. But the long form content per se, without interaction, that's something that does not fade away, mm -hmm. but 
um, people are more interested in get in getting quick input micro learning. That's what we have seen, and that's what we want to do. I am in no way defending that what we do on Instagram with mm -hmm. three, four, five pictures swiping that this is learning. That's not. That's mm -hmm. probably not even micro learning because. The tool is, uh, or the, the platform is meant mm -hmm. for something different. Mm -hmm. But it's a fantastic presentation tool for the creators. Plus, it's a nice inspirational tool or channel, what we do for the students or for just, you know, mm -hmm. for just, yeah, getting some inspiration. What we want to do is on the new website, the new platform, which mm -hmm. we call ISO 1200 Education, mm -hmm. we are building a home on the web that is ours. So it's not Instagram or Facebook, which just can switch off the channel. You get hacked and you lose like 500,000 people or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we are building our own home where we primarily, now in the phase number one, um, going for micro learning, meaning we are selecting existing YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. It's 99% about videos, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's all it is today. Um, we are selecting YouTube videos from existing YouTube videos from working professionals, photographers in the genre of portrait photography right now, because we need to boil this down somehow. So we are niching uh, for portrait photography right now. We are putting them into collections and also in learning paths. So we have two different ways to watch those videos on our uh, website. Or on our platform mm -hmm. so you can go by topic for quick wins mm -hmm. or you can follow certain paths for um, portrait crash course one portrait crash course two etc mm -hmm. the whole idea stems actually from a few years back i was searching for i don't know three light setups for this or posing for a woman and the uh, styling for couples, etc. Mm -hmm. We have so many great photographers, real world photographers, so not just YouTubers. So like you, like uh, John Grace, like Emily Teague, like Mark Wallace, Joe Edelman, Aaron Nays, blah, 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 you name it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the whole elite in the creation way is on YouTube. But of course, everything is vertical. Mm -hmm. So everybody has his own channel filling up like this topic, this topic, canon, uh, posing, uh, marketing, albums, da da da. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to pick things. You're losing so much time and it's impossible to follow all of your um, favorite creators because you have to follow like, I don't know, 25 channels or 55 mm -hmm. channels or whatever to your liking. So we are selecting picking and embedding videos based on topics into collections on our new platform. Mm -hmm. The idea is to have regarding or in regards of portrait photography as a step number one, to offer as many related videos from a few selected or uh, creators that gives you quick insights in something you're searching for, mm -hmm. which means we have to build a, a catalog for, let's say, with about 1,000 videos. So wow. we are now with around 100 videos. And of course, we want to to, um, to concentrate this not on like 700 creators. We want to have some mm -hmm. few core creators. And of course, Every creator is informed. We have to sign up from every creator. Mm -hmm. Every creator knows what's going on. We bring new views. We bring probably referrals, etc. Mm -hmm. But everything is really to support the industry. But the same way, we want to support the students with a, well, with an easy accessible catalog that's mm -hmm. boiled down to portrait photography for this stage within parameters like like how long a video is, how many light setup is, is a, is a, is a man or woman it, uh, mm -hmm. female or male uh, subject, etc. This needs a bit of time, but that's what we call micro learning, mm -hmm. and we are offering this on a on a on a free membership site, mm -hmm. so that people can comment, they can bookmark, they can um, share. So there's a lot of additional features. Mm -hmm. So 
you're trying to build it from, or we are building it from the perspe perspective of an aspiring photographer that wants, break, wants to break into portrait photography mm -hmm. or Excel and not vertically by a creative channel, which, yes, of course, you have your favorites, but for us it's about the topic and not, not per se about the creator uh, themselves, right? But Absolutely. that's what we are starting right now, or oh, that's what we launched. That's that's amazing because you know I agree on so many points with you, especially with amount of content is out there, right? And it's you know you guys basically creating a library where you know you can easily access, pick up specific topic and dive into it without you know searching hundreds and hundreds of videos. And I think also what is um, what is well it's going to be even better because well i'm sure you're aware of it that the youtube changed um, a little bit their approach to um kind of like maybe not analyzing videos but they dismiss all this like dislikes buttons right so you really don't know if this video right. is good or bad so you just have to basically watch it in order to figure it out this is for you or this is not for you but uh, i think and then we talk about it last time that the amount of content it's out there is literally impossible to watch it because I also have my favorites, uh, YouTube YouTubers and then some you know creators, but it's like impossible to go through all this content. It's like impossible, right? Because there's so much like you would waste. Well, I'm not saying waste, but you would have to go for hours and hours of content every single day to even even touch you know those things right not to mention you know kind of get this really good information which you're looking for so i i think it's a it's a fantastic idea and i think it's gonna speed up the process to get to the right information without going through all this you know crazy amount of content and i think we definitely need something like this because again time is money and sometimes we need like a quick fix or we need to learn something quickly and you just kind of, you know, put on YouTube specific question and you have like, you know, 5,000 videos and you just like lost because you really don't even know, you know, which one is going to give you those answers, right? Of course, absolutely, absolutely. I agree with every word you said. Of course, it might feel and look like we are starting to be some kind of a gatekeeper for certain things but that's really not our intention because we are acting on a on a really defined editorial grid so our job is to watch the videos to assess the videos mm -hmm. and then if we have like three videos we probably pick two of uh, i mean three great videos we have to pick two because otherwise we will be in the same position like you YouTube, just yeah. on youtube um but we have also an ethical or, well, an editorial ethical um, groundwork done. Mm -hmm. What we want to do, and that's probably one thing, you can read this on the website, but it's probably kind of important to, um, to mention here. Uh, of course, we have all our heroes, right? And mm -hmm. the heroes, I mean the ones that are most likely present on YouTube. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more heroes out there Absolutely. They're so busy as working photographers, you never see a video because they actually really prefer to as photographers. Yeah. That's completely fine. But from an educational point of view, um, we have our heroes that are existing within the within the cyberspace. So, but that are that are the ones that we already know, and some of them have their own uh, platforms, um, learning platforms. So, let's say. We are talking about uh, Peter Hurley, for example, mm -hmm. who has kind of defined and shaped a kind of a perception how headshots could or should look like. Mm -hmm. So he shaped the whole kind of, of uh, let's say, genre. We have a Sue Bryce who shaped the whole uh, whole kind of style with mm -hmm. her art of uh, with her kind of portrait photography. But, um, sorry, this is not the holy grail, right? Mm -hmm. So there are so many heroes we know we can pick from. We need to, we want to have different aspects from the same genre and topic and possibilities. Plus, and that's actually what I want to say, um, 
we decided to go for micro-learning to attract the younger audience, the audience that is used to swipe and do and that and not sitting four hours on a commute and trying to learn something. And with that, we want to bring up um, emerge, emerging um, new creators that are not yet that known in the in the cyberspace or the, in the YouTube space. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring up not only US people, we want to start cooperating with, with India. Mm -hmm. We want to start cooperating with, with and that's our kind of ethical editorial um, um, framework. We are missing so much women in our industry mm -hmm. um, that are starting out creating, being emerging um, um, creatives like a Jessica White, like an Emily Teague, who is already a bit known. We want to we want to try to give them what? Well, sorry, we want to try to get in connection with them to actually um, convince them that it is worth still to create micro content on the different and various aspects. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to do. So we do not just want to, well, replicate or boil down all of the existing heroes that are out there, mm -hmm. which without saying has a, has a lot, a lot of, 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 of credentials and we are really grateful for, for, for all of you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, and that has to do with the style of micro learning too. We want to grow um, a new body of creators. Mm -hmm. it's still, raw photographers. We don't want to have um, YouTubers. We want to actually showcase people that are working as photographers, mm -hmm. but in an educational form that appeals better to a young or to to a growing a young growing audience. Mm -hmm. You know what I the mobile audience. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and and you know what I I have to say that that's something what was always missing, right? Because we always, as you said, we have those heroes, but there's still kind of fresh blood, right? The new generations which is coming in, the new ideas, new concepts, and I think the fact that you guys are, you know, trying to give them a chance and and kind of showcase them to much broader audience. It's, it's amazing because, as yeah, that's also what I was kind of like, I don't want to say struggle a lot, but, you know, there's only just few people who are running the show and everybody else was kind of like below the surface and we couldn't even see what they do. But with today DNA, I think an ability to kind of like, you know, giving them the platform, it, it, it's amazing. So I think that's a fantastic, fantastic idea and concept because um, I, I, I know... And this is also kind of my experience. At some point, some photographers, in, even they are heroes, and even they're like, you know, the top-notch photographers, they also kind of get to the level where they kind of like doing the same thing, right? Because they got comfortable. This is my style. This is what I do. And at some point, you need something different. You need something fresh. You need to kind of see things from different perspective. And I think, you know, that fresh blood, this, you know, new, new upcoming photographers who, you know, think differently, they living in a different era, they, they look at things from completely different perspective, they can definitely bring a lot of flavor to photography. And that's how kind of this whole thing is going to evolve to completely uh, different level. So th yeah, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Okay, so right now I have a question. Um, we're going to kind of switch the gears a little bit and I want to talk about some topics which, okay. um, well, they're going to be a little bit more, I don't want to say controversial, but um, I just want to kind of dive into this. So I want to talk a little bit about sure. gear versus education because we've noticed that, and again, I'm not trying to say anything against those big you know, companies which make gear because also they do wonderful job um, you know, kind of pushing, you know, technology to completely different level. But I think what's happening also that they completely took over the way we think about photography, right? And I don't want to say, I don't want to say percentage, but we, we noticed from our experience and even from what we do that whatever you produce people the first thing most of them they ask about okay what gear was used right like this creative part is completely left out 
or you know nobody cares about it but they deeply believe and they this have this whole thing engraved in their mind that the gear creates the, the good gear gives them some creativity right so um right. and not to mention that they have you know really they have a lot of they have really strong I would say push in advertising and all this stuff that you know like we really focus on um, you know the gear and all this kind of crazy stuff but the, the reason I want to talk about this whole thing with you because you guys took completely different path and I'm not saying you guys removing the gear from what you guys try to present and what you guys try <laughs> to push but you know you are really limited I've noticed um, even on your website you know all this stuff what you guys doing the gear is like a secondary thing. The, the most important thing what you guys are pushing is, you know, being creative, having concepts, executing them, um, showcasing, you know, how things can be done different ways. Um, so how this whole thing even, like, like I want to just talk about it, like, because that was also process for you guys, right? And why do you took this, you know, kind of direction? If we could kind of discuss this a little bit, I would really appreciate it. Oh, hey, of course. <clears throat> but I sometimes I have to write something down so that I absolutely remember what I want. Yes, to yeah, I know. Your, I'm just also your many questions. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know. My question is like you know twenty sub questions. <laughs> That's fine, <laughs> but uh, yeah, my my brain with in, in the English language is sometimes I really have to write it down. But anyway, sure. So, um, let's start. <laughs> let's start on a personal level. If I could remove gear, I would remove gear. Okay. But that's my personal level. Mm -hmm. um, so there are always discussions with Jose, with my friend and, and and business partners, to what level we should or should not bring in brands. Mm -hmm. Okay. The second personal thing is I am. Super happy and stoked, and I really feel pleased for everybody, for us uh, photographers, um, that is brand ambassador in mm -hmm. some sort. Be it Explorer of Light for Canon, be it the Sony ambassador or whatever they're called, for Pro Photo Professional. Mm -hmm. I am super, super happy for everybody that gets a kind of an ambassador deal. Which does not mean that they get money, but they get a bit more of um, um, and what it is um, exposure, attention, and connections. And yeah, exactly. So that's really no nothing to do with money at all. Um, but I'm super happy because we need in the industry this kind of ambassadors in general to move photography commercially forward from a gear point of perspective. Okay. So that's are the two sides. Um, what we did on the Instagram channel is we display the gear or the brand, but we display the gear and brands that the photographer is using. So, so be it. Mm. We don't care, right? Um, what we're trying to do on the platform, on the new educational platform, is we, if we talk about gear, we talk about functional gear. Mm -hmm. Um, if we talk about the three light setup with speed lights, it doesn't matter if the speed light is a is a let's name a few. Uh, if the speed light is a Godox, a Nikon, a Sony, uh, or a Canon, or Met or whatever, the same goes for strobes. The same goes for light forms. If we talk about crop sensor to full frame to to to, to medium format, sometimes we have to mention that. The most affordable medium format is, I don't know, a Hasselblad or a Fuji or whatever. But it's always about the function of the specs and the gear and not brands or brand deals. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, there's there's kind of one trap. We want to be new. Well, which brings me back, which brings me back, sorry, mm -hmm. to the grooming, right? So we try to groom new folks uh, via the Instagram channel because there is on, on, on the channel we see the creativity, what they're using, the delivery, etc., etc. 
And with the young folks, most likely, they are not yet attached to any brands or gear or ambassadors because they are just emerging emerging um, um, photographers, so they make it the way up. That's cool. The same goes then for the platform itself because we want to teach or give insights, micro-learning into the different aspects of portrait photography. So you don't need a Sony or a Nikon or a Canon uh, as a body for shooting um, a portraits. You don't need a crop factor, a, a, a full frame or cropped or a medium format or whatever. So it's about the principles. And the trap lies in as soon we would start to pay for a brand, which would need to be some um, financial uh, incentives, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Why would we? Um, we are excluding a lot of the others. So if, if we go with Profoto, which almost none of the emerging photographers um, buy as a brand because of the price level, but they are fantastic, but it's just how the market works. If you go with Profoto, then we, we would get a lot of comments like, okay, I mean, guys, are you crazy? The same is if we go with Godox, for example, the lighting gear, it's like, okay, um, you're just go on the cheap side. So we decided to, and cheap in a way of inexpensive, not, not in a way of, 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 of not functional. Um, but the market is out there. We are trying to give you at hand what gear functions you need Mm -hmm. And it's completely up to you what you will buy. Yeah. My personal opinion, of course, is use the career or brand that does the job. Mm -hmm. And if you want to invest a little bit more, and if you love to have a higher end brand, whatever this means, go for it. But gear is really, 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 re or brands, sorry, gear, yes, brands are really not important. Sorry, guys, I've said it. Yes, I, and you know what? I 100% agree with you. And I've been advocating this for decades, right? And I know I got really, sometimes, I don't want to say in trouble, but, you know, people were not happy that I'm not trying to push it, you know, the new stuff and whatever. But uh, I, I, my personal experience was that the less I focus on the gear and I, the more I focus on the being more creative and just making things work. And as you said, it's the principles, it's the functions of the equipment. Then your photography kind of takes off and, and, and you just kind of doing things better. But just believing this kind of, that's just the biggest myth that the gear will make you better photographer. That I think has to go out of the window and people have to understand it before even they even get into this industry, right? So that's why um, I, I'm happy I have someone out there who supports this. And, um, you know, this is something which is extremely important. And, and, and again, this message has to be pushed hard and hard um, because, you know, I, I know, and again, this is going to be like a little kind of bad experience I had that I really got into extreme debt because, you know, I was buying all this expensive stuff and, and you have to pay for them somehow, right? And right. I know, especially when you're starting off, some photographers, right. they don't have that money um, and, and, and they just kind of digging themselves into grave financially because, you know, they, they, they have this, you know, crazy belief that this is going to really take their photography to another level, which it doesn't, um, you know, most of the time. And it's important that they, 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 they know that beforehand. Okay, so... Let's kind of cut this off so we're not going to get into more problems. I don't know if you may want to make, Yeah, one comment. Just make an additional note, please. Um, with our Mind for Learning, we really try to give you techniques or insights at hand and not brand, mm -hmm. brands. Because we also don't want to feature the most fancy, newest stuff. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about posing in relation of a shoot, I mean... Of course, the, the visual language changes, etc., and that's where we want to bring in the new folks. Mm -hmm. Creativity is about the new visual language, is about what happened over the last four years, etc. But certain principles are still the same. So if you have a three-point lighting, for whatever reason, we did three-point lighting 50 years ago. Probably was yes. a bit softer, or a bit more glamorish, or a bit, a little bit more whatever. But the photographer was able to, 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 to get the 
the subject in focus, he was able to have the ratio. He had his, uh, he or her had her, um, the right light, light forms, etc., etc. And that's what it is all about. Of course, the visual language has changed. Of course, it's nice to have an eye of the focus. And if we now will talk about pet photography and probably um, wedding photography, mm -hmm. that's kind of really makes it easier than like 70 years ago. And I'm not against advancement in, in tech, but it really, it's the tool what you need for your job, right? And it's not necessarily a brand itself. So yeah. that's that's our um, um, approach. That's how we handle this. Yeah. Well, it because gives, we want to yeah. learn to. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. Please. We want to we want to make we want to give you micro learning that lets you advance in portrait photography in general. That you can actually do a business out of it or or really nice hobby, and that's most likely never to do with brands, with gear, yes, but not really with brands. And if you really get into that for, for you know, for, for starting something, that's kind of the wrong way to go anyway. Absolutely. Well, the new gear gives you convenience. I think that's all what it is, right? It's not give you... As I, as well, we said, and that's great. Yeah. That's great. But it's most likely not always needed. Yes. That's 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 the whole point, right? It's, it makes you feel better, maybe you know, gives you a little bit easier to to deal with specific kind of, of things. That's but great. but there's always ways to overcome this, right? It slows the process, uh, or you know. Okay, so let's go back to social media a little bit. Um, I want to touch a little bit mm -hmm. about the the good, the bad, and the ugly side of social media because you guys grown your social media to some extreme numbers which is amazing and it's such also fairly i don't know quick time um so so let's talk about first of all the the, the you know the positive sides of the social media because it's a huge part of you know every photographer and if you're running the business not being able to be on social media well if you're not on social media like you pretty much non-existent person um, and let's also talk about the ugly side as well, because, you know, the social media is not perfect. It's still developing. Um, there is still a lot of things which needs to be addressed or changed or adjusted. And I think with the world we live in and this whole thing is also um, changing a little bit. So let's talk a little bit. Let's start with the good side. Like what's because, again, like you guys grow on your social media fairly quickly and just went to some 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 amazing numbers. So what do you think was the success behind it? You guys were providing something new. You guys have some specific approach. Um, you know, how you guys look at social media from your perspective. So if we talk about social media in general, let's just now focus first on Instagram, right? Yes. Because the Facebook group, which is now in a similar size, but that's kind of a different brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. So Instagram. Um, I really think the time Jose started that this, like, let's say six years ago, five to six mm -hmm. years ago, there was a lot of luck. He was just the first that did it in mm -hmm. this kind of approach, mm -hmm. end of story. Um, and then, of course, at, if you grow to a certain number, let's say, I don't know, let's say 100,000. I'm really not a social media guru. I'm, I mean, that's like here. That's, it's here. I use it. I communicate. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, the strategic expert for that. But if you have like 100,000 followers and if you keep maintaining it and of course the social platform does not change the game because mm -hmm. that's what can happen every time so like now we are not a photo sharing app anymore we are now a video app or whatever so mm -hmm. let's see what this brings um it starts to be like a flywheel mm -hmm. and especially i mean what we did is great but also ac ac accelerate accelerate or mm -hmm. pronunciation accelerate content that actually features other people right mm -hmm. so um if we would have done just, if we would have created our own posts, like most photographers do, in general, starting, um, you don't get that growth. So it's all about connection, it's all about tagging, it's all about bringing the word out. 
and we grew because we actually featured different people in the same industry, mm -hmm. which then led back to, to the effect that it, it, it um, what is the word, that there was the word of mouth, etc., etc. So the great thing about social media or Instagram is, for us, from our perspective, is that we can connect people and network with people and that then the word gets out and, as you said, that then certain photographers start to create their posts or their carousels or mm -hmm. whatever this is called, the way that it is easy for us to share and it's in the format. That's like an unwritten, that's like an unwritten process, right? That mm -hmm. goes somewhere. And obviously there are a lot of people interested into the ins and to get insights how certain photos are done. And then of course we have experimented with carousels uh, from all the photographers. Do we show first the BTS picture and then the, 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 the set plan and then the result or do we show first the final, etc. So there was always a little bit kind of, you know, kind of testing what works best. Um, but somehow uh, Jose found his formula four years ago and this seems to work. But it's quite, first of all, we were the first, I, I would say, plus minus. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a few, um, oh, yeah. not say competitors, but there are a few other channels doing the same. Uh, none of them is as that big, uh, but with the same principle. But I really think we are in a comfortable position. We don't produce. We accelerate, we correlate, and we spread the word, and we tag, and we help the community, and it helped you, and you're grateful, and then you tell somebody about us, etc., etc. If we would produce on our own, it would really be hard as a, as a creator, not as a brand, not as Coca-Cola, not as, a, as mm -hmm. a huge company, or Sony, or whatever. Um, it would be hard to get this kind of mm -hmm. um, numbers. Absolutely. So we were lucky and we were in a kind of a comfortable position. We, we are the facilitators, like now with the new platform. We are mm -hmm. in between trying to get the best for you guys and trying to get in a meaningful way the best for the students. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what is the, the ugly side of social media? Like, do you guys have any issues you guys have to deal with or face it? Or you guys had some challenges which you guys had to overcome? We haven't had yet, mm -hmm. thankfully. But if you look at stories like what to Joe Edelman happened, I don't know, with Instagram or YouTube, or with one of his channels. I mean, we are building on rented land. It's pretty simple, right? So if they want, they they change the, the they change the rules of the game, the guidelines, mm -hmm. or in worst case, they kill your channel because of whatever something that was tagged wrong or some branding issue or mm -hmm. whatever, and you have most likely absolutely no chance to appeal. No. So we we run the show as long as we can, and we are super happy about it. Mm -hmm. And for us, it really helped to accelerate and to to, to communicate our brand mm -hmm. and what we are all about. Plus, more and more and more important to connect with all you guys mm -hmm. first, just by sharing and sometimes with some messages. And now we are talking, right? Yes. Personally, privately, or commercially. Um, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But. From a creative perspective, you are building on rented land, mm -hmm. which is okay. It costs you nothing. In the best case, you can accelerate your followership quite quickly because of your style, because of your delivery, because mm -hmm. of whatever you do. Um, but there's no guarantee. Yes. Plus, let's see where Instagram is heading. Mm -hmm. Still no creative gets paid. At least in YouTube, they found some kind of, a, of a whatever a monetization thing that you get paid for whatever if you're not demon demon <laughs> what is the word if you're not cut off the the, the monetization etc. Yes. Uh, so Instagram did a fantastic job for themselves to get billions of users without paying and re reaping in billions of dollars without paying a single cent to all of us. Yes. 
Well, I can share a little personal story with when it comes to Instagram, right. and, and this is I want to just kind of point one things that even though we have this platform, it's 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 free. We can definitely you know uh, use it and 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 you know take advantage of it. But um, the one story I want to share with you, and um, this is what happened to my wife. You know, she's also working in the social media industry, and her account was hacked. They sent some, you know, okay. kind of fake link. Um, she spontaneously, you know, click on it. They got, um, they got pretty much access to her account. Got in, changed the passwords, basically cut her off completely from getting access to it. And she's got also a fairly big account, and they started like literally doing a scam. To all her business mm -hmm. partners, you know, try out. They ask for money. They they start threatening them, and and what was really and this is a, why I want to point it out. This whole thing because um, there's literally no way of communicating with Instagram. Like you know, if something like this happens, you can, you completely right. you know get anything out of it. It's it's really hard. And and I and I from what I understand, I understand this because they grow so big. In order to even respond to, I don't know, 5% of all those complaints they're getting is probably in, in, impossible due to amount of, you know, content which goes through it. But also what we have learned, which was also fascinating, that we went to the police station and we said, hey, you know what, we ran into the situation where someone hacked into our account. The, the, the hackers started threatening and tried to create some fake monetization campaigns so they can get the money out of her clients. And to be in to, to, to kind of tell you the other side of the story, the police also there's nothing what they can do, and it seems like social media yeah. becoming this place where is I don't want to it's a good comparison, but at this point it's a little bit kind of wild west. When it goes well, it goes well, but it's kind of you know sorry for my language, the shit hits the fan, it's a mess, right? And and there's yeah. no way what yeah. we can do about it. Um, but, you know, the one thing what I want to point it out, and this is also what I want to just, just say it again, what you have said, we can grow this whole thing to whatever numbers, you know, we can be successful, but this whole thing might be taking away, like, you know, on the split of the second, right? And, and there's... Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you need to put a lot of uh, fail-safes into the place to that certain things not could happen that easily, but mm -hmm. still, uh, we don't roll the game or we don't roll the play. So mm -hmm. if, if the social platform decides to, for whatever reason, do whatever they want, that's it. Mm -hmm. So that happens to, in the early stage, 10 years ago, that happens to happened to a lot of bloggers. I don't know what it's called, blogger, what was the called for a blogger.com, and then they get merged, and then at some point they just shut down the, the whole thing, yeah. The, the whole platform, and you could not download your blogs or posts or blah, blah, blah. So, um, and that's not complaining, that's just, we know that when we start. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are all intelligent people, so we know what game we are getting in, right? Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, but just use it accordingly. Don't use this kind of platforms for building your sole income stream or business on that. Mm -hmm. So use it for getting additional attention, connections, networking as your portfolio. Um, if the portfolio dies, you, you use another site for portfolio, whatever. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But um, the ugly side from us, from a business perspective, and not as a user, you know, time waste and all this mm -hmm. stuff and psychological impact, from a business perspective is put it into your mix so you can leverage it the best as long as it goes for whatever you need, mm -hmm. but it doesn't really hurt you if they switch it off for whatever reason, and most likely it's never your mistake or your fault anyway. So, um, yeah. We are super happy. We are super grateful that we could do that and that we are still doing that. We would not be able, and that's where I came in like two years ago. We will not be able now to have launched the new education platform, mm -hmm. which we deliberately do and host and whatever do by our own. So 
even some company would shut down the shut down the server. Mm -hmm. We have backup, and I can move to a next server. So that's yes. ours. Um, but we could not have started this first idea concept and now the launch without having had Instagram channel the Instagram channel in place to connect with to help mm -hmm. you guys out to connect with all of your guys to getting your trust to make a little bit testing the market and the others who are people or the students what are they really interested in, right? So BTS stuff and then with mm -hmm. showers, etc. It would have been impossible without Instagram. So we are super grateful for that. Yes. But they could have shut us down three years ago for whatever reason and we probably would not have launched um, the education platform because we would not have the connections we or the networking we have now with you guys. So Absolutely. yeah, that's fantastic. The only thing is you don't have it under control. Not at all. Yes. Okay, so that leads me to my last question. And this is one of the okay. most requested question for you. Um, what advice you would give to photographers, especially the new ones or, you know, the ones who are starting off to be future on your, you know, social media platforms, um, your website? What, from your perspective, is content which has some kind of value? Like how you guys evaluate, okay, this is the content which we would like to promote it, and this is the content which is not kind of good enough to be published. I hope that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, for the platform itself, for the new education platform, the self-hosted micro-learning thing, we do not yet have a process. We have a few ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, but we are actually contacting and start picking people that you already know uh, via Instagram. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is writing us via the, uh, the, the, the form, the online form, so we start discussions. But right now, behind <laughs> business-wise, behind the scenes for us, what we are doing is actually uh, watching what's happening on the Instagram account to see which new faces are emerging, mm -hmm. right? So and that's then when we go into contact if we want to see, if we want to have some more closer um, connections. So the easiest way to get an idea, that's like with submitting an editorial to a magazine. So go okay. to the channel, to the Instagram channel, uh, skim, in detail, okay, look in detail at all the posts that are up there mm -hmm. to get an idea what we are actually featuring. It's not about the genre because as, as far as I know, we have product photography, uh, mm -hmm. people, um, you know, all sorts of photography that allows for um, meaningful behind the scenes, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're shooting a waterfall or... And, um, landscape photography most likely I don't think we have a lot of landscape photography mm -hmm. because there's just not a lot of behind the scenes that mm -hmm. is kind of a nice insight because normally it's the camera tripod and you know the landscape but whatever um, please visit the Instagram channel and look what observe what we are um, what we are actually promoting or what we are sharing mm -hmm. it's most likely always one to two to three very professional done behind the scenes photos because mm -hmm. it's about behind the scenes. The result is one thing, of course, but behind the scenes insights are more important than the result itself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really surprising. You see how little gear you need for a fantastic portrait. And sometimes you see like setups, if they shooting a car or whatever, we have like 20, 20 strokes or whatever. Yeah. But that's an interesting thing. Um, you need to have high quality behind the scenes mm -hmm. that fits to a nice, of course, to a very professional um, final image. And most likely there's always like a set plan or a set, a light 3D um, mm -hmm. um, graphic for illustration. And that's this little, super little micro-learning package that lets you flip mm -hmm. through like, okay, this was done this way. Um, if you're not yet on that level, we have this uh, Facebook group mm -hmm. where we 
um, let you share your behind the scenes. There's also the, uh, like like a publishing process. So you upload it, and this, one of our team members needs to approve it. But the enter barrier is a little bit lower in a way of um, we feature hobbyists too. Mm -hmm. So definition of hobbyists is like even if it's uh, very professional, but somebody who's not earning his money or somebody who's really just doing it as a hobby at the site, that's fine. On the Instagram channel, we most likely feature, I would say, 95% people that are really like professional photographers in a way that they are, they are earning their money with the photography. Mm -hmm. But that's a bit the big difference. But of course, if you start shooting, always shoot a few nice professional behind the scenes. So the, the behind the scenes are really, they need to look like fine images, like, like the fine mm -hmm. pictures. And then if you have a final image, that's perfect. Perfect. And of course, you have to tag us, otherwise we will not find you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> because, yeah, uh, yeah we, we, we need to get kind of a notification, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Perfect. You know what, that's... Uh, well, well yeah, sorry. I ask you the question, how do you do it? I mean, well, I, I, I've sure. done it, you know what, the same, exactly the same way you've described it. And um, I always was always big fan of, you know, your, your, your Instagram account because I was also trying to get some new ideas and I was just always going through because there's so much value there, right? And, and sometimes I see some concepts which I, I really like and, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't trying to steal them, but I was trying to incorporate them in, in my work. Yes. So that was always kind of interesting. And, um, yeah, and I, I, at some point I started kind of tagging you because I, I really love what you guys are doing. Um, and um, I, I deeply believe that other photographers, you know, should know about this type of place where they can find some interesting information and resources to improve their photography. And I don't even remember when this whole thing started, but I remember um, one of the posts you guys have shared on your site and uh, like my account you know I, like i started slow like i was you know kind of on the minimum level for a long time and i was trying to do different things and then never worked you know i didn't get any kind of like pushed with my account and i remember this one particular uh post which you guys shared just just kind of shoot this whole thing to the sky and i was just like holy smokes that th this is the way you know, you can really push your social media that you connect with with some bigger accounts, and if they reshare yeah. your stuff, you will see some interest. You know, from so so that's always kind of make me super excited. Um, also, at this point, I think you've got so big that it's it's like you guys create a kind of own brand, and then I, I think we've talked about it last time. I was lucky to be one of the keynote speakers and one of the events in India. And I was like, of course, online because during the pandemic. But I mentioned that okay. to you last time when they introduced me, uh, one of the things where they said, you know, I was featured on, on ISO 1200. So it's like a prestige right now, you know, to be featured there, um, you know, kind of makes photographers, you know, believe, well, I don't want to say believe, but just, just give you this like, a, they did, it takes you a little bit higher, right? Like you really feel that you know your your work is recognized, is 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 good, is 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 basically you know kind of the quality is good enough, so it's pushed a little bit further. So that's why I think I want to also mention to all those photographers who are out there and and you know they they looking to I would say um, you know kind of get their social media to the next level. They want to showcase their work. Um, you know, look at your site, tag you guys, and then, you know, if you, you, you're lucky and then you produce some interesting stuff, you, you're definitely going to be recognized and then, and, and, you know, and then pushed and then, you know, there's only good things happen from there, right? So that's a, that's a, the yeah. good thing. And yeah, and I just want to say thank you for, you know, everything what you guys are doing, because as I mentioned, and I, I know I'm repeating myself a million times already. But uh, you guys really helped my business tremendously, and and I and and I really appreciate it. And I think you guys are doing fantastic work when it comes to changing the path of education, uh, helping photographers, you know, showcasing different type of you know genres of photography. But I think what is the most exciting, and it, and again, I'm I'm gonna just kind of jump a little bit into this. 
that sometimes the photo itself is not as exciting as the behind the scenes because sometimes I see people like, oh, great photo, but yeah. the behind the scenes and they go on and on and on about it, right? You know, how you've done this, how you've done that. So seeing the photo is a one thing, but seeing how it's done, I think these days is one of the most exciting things that you know how it was done, right? Because again, seeing big art or amazing art is great, but seeing how it was done it's like a, I don't know, someone is revealing their trick, right? You're a magician, you have all these kind of cool moves, whatever, and then, and, 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 you know, you can see how it was done. That is, I think, most exciting. And I think that's what you guys are doing, right? It's not like just showcasing great images, but also showing, you know, how this whole thing was created, how it was done. And I, I think these days with this kind of era where, you know, we are so starving for education, it's 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 something you know really really neat. Absolutely. Well, we are really happy that we can help all of you guys and the industry. That's how we see our role, and we're really really happy that it has an impact. Mm -hmm. And again, we are the partner for the industry. But now, not now, but we really see us as a facilitator between the creators and the new type of students with this kind of new type of learning. Yes. Instagram is the stream of micro learning and the new platform is a very organized catalog of micro learning. So I really think with all of you guys, you're getting with so much fantastic content that is out there. Um, we have a real value that we can offer to a new type of students. Yes. So we are really grateful and thank you, uh, thankful for that. Absolutely. Thank you, Dan, for this fantastic conversation. I'm, I'm going to try to do this um, once in a while with you because it seems like this whole thing is progressing. Um, I'm going to tag, um, even though you guys are way bigger than I am, but I'm going to try to push this information towards my audience and let people sign up for the new educational website. Um, I will put all the information in the description so people know how to sign up for it. And um, yeah, I'll be looking closely at everything what you guys are doing. Um, yeah, if you guys need anything from me, I'm always here for you and um, any type of help you guys might need, um, I'm 100% I'm involved. So thank you for the conversation and um, yeah, let's, let's keep in touch and um, yeah, I, I will be definitely um, trying to promote everything what you guys are doing. Thank you so much for having me and for the talk. It was really interesting. And yes, we have to continue that at one point for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Guys, okay. see you. Bye-bye.